What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into issue number 24 of Venom. Now, when it comes to the Venom line, there has been a lot going on. From Eddie Brock to Dylan Brock, we have seen Eddie Brock traversing time and space, his consciousness jumping from one symbiote to another throughout time. But now, he is on the path to saving his son. To save his son, he is going to need time travel. Though he can technically time travel, he needs something a little more real. That way, not just his consciousness is traveling, but his whole body. And so, he goes to the one person that he knows that might have something he needs. That somebody is Dr. Doom. Now, make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, we are picking up at the TSA of Doombots. Eddie Brock has traveled to the land of Doom. And he is going under the alias of Charles Allen. As he goes through all of the baggage checks, this is where one of the Doombots says that he is lying. He said that he had nothing to declare, and they know this to be false. When he opens up the bag, this is where Bedlam comes out. He eats up one of these Doombots. And though he tried to warn the Doombot, it didn't change the outcome. This is when the other Doombots begin to descend down on Eddie. Because what he just did is a capital offense. Revealing his real name to be Eddie Brock. He tells the Doombots that he is here to see Doom. That him and the Doctor go way back. Referring to Venom Lethal Protector 2. But these Doombots, they don't care. They begin to electrify him. Stopping Eddie Brock's heart, he only starts it up again. Saying that you could throw anything you choose. It's not gonna stop me. When the Doombots step it up, this is where Bedlam says that he wants in on the games. Bonding himself to Eddie yet again, we see them go and just dominate everything. Not a single Doombot can stand in their way. And some hours later, we have Dr. Doom who is getting a sit rep from one of his Doombots. As the Doombot tries to save its own self. But because of this Doombot's failure, we see Doom destroy it. A knock at the door, and that is where we have the arrival of Bedlam and Eddie Brock. With Doom inviting Eddie to sit down and have some food. We see the symbiote go away and Eddie Brock go ahead and sit at the table. And if Eddie's being honest, this wasn't the reception that he anticipated. But Doom has a sliver of respect for him. Eddie Brock is now a king. And he came to this title the same as Doom did. Not through some petty accident of birth. It was as random and unearned as the path of a cosmic storm. By the shedding of his blood. By the sweat of his brow. And the knowledge that is at his command. And while Eddie is definitely not ungrateful. He seems to recall their altercation over control of just one symbiote. Now he has control over all of them. Asking Doom, should he be worried? And Doom tells him, of course you should. But what is life without any risk? But Eddie wouldn't come here unless there was something that Doom had that he wanted. And Eddie tells him that he's right. There is one thing that they have in common, and that is time travel. Now, Doom's not sure if he can really time travel. There are those that claim they can time travel, but it's really just dimensional travel with extra steps. Traveling to parallel realities. Technically, this is a form of time traveling, but Doom wouldn't consider it to be that. Eddie going on to say that he can time travel, but it is just his mind. He is unable to change stuff with that. He can only be the cause of it. And so, to do what he needs to do without getting locked in his own destiny, he needs to bring his body with him as well. He needs a real time machine. He needs Dr. Doom's. And Doom immediately tells him that that is out of the question. That he would never allow somebody like Eddie Brock to have universe-destroying technology like this at his fingertips. With Doom also saying that he's gonna give him a chance to turn away from the path that he is on. To go home. Return to your son. But Eddie knows that he can't. Dylan is the quest. Right now, he's a danger to him. He is a ticking time bomb. He must defuse himself to end the threat or he can never go home. And so knowing that this will not be solved through civilized means, Doom asks if he would like to start then. With Bedlam coming out, we see Eddie Brock flip the table, smash it on top of Dr. Doom's head, and this fight is in full effect. With Doom summoning the awful arm, it grabs hold of Eddie. 
and one by one, Eddie begins to break its fingers. Breaking its grip over him, even Dr. Doom is impressed. Such a simple tactic, yet so effective. Doom saying that he will remember this for the next visit to the Infernal Court. But as Doom goes to end this once and for all, we see that Eddie breaks through a wall. Breaking through this wall, he walks into a room that seems very different than the one he was just in. This is where Doom really starts to get irritated. Eddie deducing that this must be the room that has the time machine in it. That is the only reason that Doom would be so irritated with him coming in here, but with Doom giving him a heavy blast in the back. He goes in to try and finish off Eddie Brock only for Bedlam to grab hold of Dr. Doom. Biting his head, Dr. Doom fights to be free. Meanwhile, Eddie Brock is tinkering and punching and touching everything on this machine trying to get it to work. With nothing working and Doom getting even closer, Eddie Brock decides he's just gonna punch it. Punching the machine, this is what activates it. And with the time machine turning on, we see Eddie Brock, Doctor Doom, and Bedlam all getting sucked into time. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. A relatively short issue, but definitely enjoyable. You guys know I love anything that has Doctor Doom in it. And this is no exception. Seeing the King in Black standing against Doctor Doom. We have to assume that Doctor Doom knows the full extent of the King in Black's powers. And so, is it arrogance or is it just hubris thinking that he could actually defeat him? Now, this fight wasn't Eddie Brock trying to go against Doctor Doom. It was Eddie Brock trying to find the time machine. If he was actually trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doom, I think this fight would have gone a much different direction, but we also haven't seen the full extent of Eddie's powers. Now that he has a full understanding of what he is, where he is, and what he is supposed to be, Eddie Brock has never been more powerful, on par with the Beyonders themselves. Could Doom truly stand against such a force? Now, maybe we'll get the opportunity to see in the next issue, or maybe we'll see a Venom Doctor Doom team up as they try to escape wherever they are in time. And while this issue was definitely enjoyable because of Doctor Doom, they really have been drawing this out. I'm ready to finally get to the end point at this point. Let us know what's gonna truly happen with Eddie, what's happening with Dylan, Codex, Carnage, all of this stuff is supposed to be intersecting. And it has been months on top of months on top of months building up this story. And I'll admit, I'm a rather impatient person. But I've been letting this story play out and these, there seems to be almost like filler issues. Which is definitely something to be expected if they want to draw out some kind of event. There's so much already going on with inside the Marvel Universe that we can understand postponing or drawing out everything going on with Eddie until after those events have truly passed. Because right now, everybody has their hands full with the fall of X. But the Summer of Symbiotes has been quite interesting. Everything going on with the death of the Venomverse. It's only gonna be a matter of time before Eddie Brock catches on to what is going on with Carnage. Or, will Carnage catch him off guard? He has been building up his powers. He is becoming godlike himself to take on the King in Black. Is Eddie so preoccupied with his son and everything else going on that he is completely missing the fact that Carnage is becoming God tier and getting ready to knock him off of his throne? Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this series, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with Venom. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers. From $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.